Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Hypothyroidism, or an underactive thyroid. It's a condition in which your thyroid gland does not produce enough of the hormones that it normally does. And the one I think everybody is familiar with is the thyroid hormone called thyroxin. Some 10 or 15 million Americans have hypothyroidism, and women, especially those over the age of 60, you're not even close, are most (laughs) often affected. Hypothyroidism upsets the normal balance of chemical reactions in your body. It seldom causes symptoms in the early stages, but over time, untreated hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism can cause a number of health problems, such as obesity, joint pain, and heart disease. The good news is, diagnosis and treatment is safe, simple, and effective. Well, if you go to an expert, that's for sure. When here to discuss hypothyroidism is a true expert, Mayo Clinic physician and former president of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, Dr. Hossein Garib. Dr. Garib, great to have you on the program. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Is that pretty accurate? Um, The literature would suggest there's uh, at least 10 million people in America who have hypothyroidism? Correct. Uh, I think that the estimates are uh, 2.5% of the population has uh, hypothyroidism. So two or three people out of every 100. Right. Hypothyroid. And in fact, it, what is even more impressive is that borderline hypothyroidism or subclinical disease is present in 10%. So if we go with uh, small changes in thyroid function, that's even far more pre- prevalent. So subclinical, you mean that their thyroid is not working as well as it should, but they don't, they, they don't have enough symptoms that they've sought treatment. That's part, partly true, or it's part, part of it is because uh, the changes in thyroid function is minimal. Mm-hmm. It is not as advanced. Some patients do have symptoms. Is there um, increasingly, a, uh, is it occurring more often, this hypothyroidism, or are you just getting better at detecting it? That's it. Uh, better tests, more sensitive tests, better detection, and uh, more diagnosis. So who is at uh, particular risk? I, as I recall, more women than men have this condition, that and you, it, it's more likely to, to strike those who are older? That's exactly right. Uh, some uh, risk factors include uh, being a woman, uh, older population, iodine deficiency, or certain drugs that we commonly use in practice. So explain to us how an iodine deficiency, and, and where you might see that in the world, um, can lead to hypothyroidism? Uh, thankfully, the U.S. Does, is not an iodine-deficient country because of iodine salt that is used nationally. Um, however, parts of the world, there is iodine deficiency. Iodine is an important element for thyroid hormone uh, synthesis and uh, secretion. And so when iodine is not available in adequate quantities, thyroid gland works hard but does not produce enough hormones. As a result, patients become both hypothyroid and develop an enlarged thyroid or a goiter. And again, that is hypothyroid is the underactive thyroid, but the hyper one is the overactive. Is that not as common? A hyper is not as common, Okay. although it is more complicated than hypo for diagnosis and treatment. Oh, why is it, that? Because it is a more complicated uh, sy- symptom complex. Oh, it's trickier to track down? It's tr- tricky to treat. There are complications for treatment. There are complications for disease. Gotcha. Is this familial at all? If, if someone in your family has had hypothyroidism, are you more likely to get it? The most common cause of hypothyroidism is autoimmune thyroid disease, which means the body uh, fights against the thyroid. Mm. That then is a genetic predisposition. That's why it, more and more women are, are affected, and some families have predisposition to this condition. So you see some a number of women in one family being affected. And the important item is that hyper and hypo, overactive and underactive thyroid, is the spectrum. So in some family members, you may have hyper, in another, hypo. Wow. Is the thyroxin the one that we hear about and the one that the replacement hormone that people take if they do have hypothyroidism or they've had their thyroid removed, is that the only hormone that the thyroid gland produces? So thyroxine was actually discovered, crystallized at Mayo 100 years ago by Dr. Kendall. 
Really? So historically, it's almost just a little bit more than 100 years ago, thyroxine was discovered. There are two thyroid hormones, thyroxine or T4 and triiodothyronine or T3. Both are secreted from the thyroid, although thyroxine is a more important element. So you can replace the, the thyroxine, but you don't need to replace the other one? Thyroxine changes, converts to T3 in, in peripheral tissue. So if I take thyroxine, my T3 comes from that thyroxine, ingested the thyroxine. So it sounds like uh, once you make the diagnosis, the treatment is relatively simple. You just have to give the patient thyroxine? Exactly, and diagnosis is easy also. We have a thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, which is a reliable, sensitive test, widely available. If TSH goes up, hypothyroidism is diagnosed. And then once it is diagnosed, then treatment is with thyroxine, and a hormone that has been present for more than 70 years in clinical practice. I'm going to have to disagree a little bit that it's uh, relatively easy to treat, but it's, it's not just straight out of the gate because you have to figure out what level of thyroxine do you get to get those levels where they're supposed to be because you can be too high or too low, and then, then you're hyper instead of hypo. That is correct. Uh, you are right. In, in other words, we do replace thyroid def thyroxine deficiency by administering thyroid. But uh, some patients don't completely have uh, alle alleviation of symptoms. Some remain mildly symptomatic. That's why there has been a recent advocacy for using both hormones in practice. So a combination of thyroxine and T3 or th desiccated thyroid extract. Most professional endocrine societies do not uh, support or recommend this practice, but there are advocacy groups and some patients who claim that they benefit from it. Is that being studied to determine if it should be both? It has been studied. There are reports on both sides of the issue. All right, let's talk about symptoms. Uh, so if someone were hypothyroid, don't have enough uh, thyroid hormone, what, what do they complain of? What do they feel like? Symptoms are nonspecific, and so a lot of patients complain of fatigue, of weight issues, in women, menstrual irregularities, cold intolerance, constipation, musculoskeletal symptoms, things that are very nonspecific. There is a huge overlap between hypothyroidism and the population that has no thyroid condition but has similar symptoms. Because this is, is as common as it is, and the symptoms can be many and varied, is it your recommendation or is it standard practice for, let's say, women over the age of 60 to get a thyroid hormone when, when they have their general exam? Several of our groups, including our own organization, AACE, we have recommended screening with TSH in patients who are at high risk. For example, those who have other autoimmune disorders, family history of uh, thyroid disease, or they're older than 60. And so that TSH test is a thyroid-stimulating hormone, and if you've got too much of that, it means that that TSH is trying to stimulate the thyroid, and it can't get the job done, and so it keeps going higher and exactly. higher, and that's the key. Exactly. The higher the number, the more likely your thyroid is profoundly deficient. Can't you just check the, the thyroxine level itself? You can. That is not as accurate or as sensitive as TSH. So TSH is the gold standard for thyroid function testing. So right. we mentioned at the beginning that the age of 60 is when most women start to have trouble with this. Is that just something that should be added to a regular exam to just check that thyroid level? It is, it is a recommendation by several endocrine groups that uh, TSH be checked uh, as a screening test at age 60 or thereafter. There you go. Symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment from one of the world's experts, Dr. Hossein Garib, hypothyroidism. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much. That's our program for this week.